Welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series Storm Division. I am the Crushinator, and tonight I am bringing you a matchup between Regen and GG Till I Die. Another best of five here on twitch.tv slash Nexus Gaming Series. Right now we've got seven pending eight in the lobby. Hopefully we'll be able to get going soon enough. But I hope you're all having an excellent evening. If you're all excited to be here, check out tonight's action. Oh, eat in the lobby. Getting close. Take a quick look at the map bands here before we get started. Regen, band away, Tomb of the Spider Queen, and Infernal Shrines. GG Till I Die, removing Battlefield of Eternity and Volskaya Foundry here in this series. And we will be going to Dragonshire for game number one, where Regen will have first pick. Alrighty. Up to nine players in the lobby. Oh. We're so close. So close. Just one more. Make sure I've got everybody here. Ba -ba -ba. Am I missing? There we go. Maka is on the way. A likely story. <laughs> That's okay. Shouldn't be too much longer. Take a quick peek at the standings right now. Regen in 7th place. GG Till I Die in 2nd place. As we are moving towards the final weeks of regular season here in Storm Division. Uh, this Is this the last week? This might be the last week. I think next week is the last week. Let me double check. Pretty sure next week is the last week for regular season. Let's see. Yeah, we're in week six, and then week seven next week is our final regular season week before playoffs. Exciting. Very, very exciting stuff. Is Maka here yet? No. Unfortunate. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Regen looking for their first match win this uh, this season. Gonna be looking to see if they can snipe one here versus GG till I die. Season the uh, the standings are starting to separate here for sure. Heavy impact and GG till I die, both without a series loss so far. Both sitting at five wins, but they do play each other next week. That'll be an exciting one. I think I get to cast that one next uh, next Friday. Is when Heavy Impact and GG till I die finally meet to see who will separate out in the standings. Ooh, we got our 10th. Yes, yes. Maka is here. All right, I'll give him the cast already. Lobby set. Correct first draft team. Fantastic. We'll be getting into draft number one here in just a moment. Man. My room's at this really weird temperature right now. Like, it was warm earlier, so my room's still warm, but it's going down to, like, 7C tonight. So I don't, I'm like trying to modulate how open the window is. Oh my goodness. But right now, feeling hot. Let's see if that cools off as this game goes on. As the sun is indeed down. <laughs> Let's get into game number one here. We're going to Dragonshire. Regen will be first to act. Imagine we'll see pretty standard stuff coming out in the ban phase. Junkrat almost certainly going to be taken away. I imagine we'll see Brightwing removed as well. I'm interested to see if Hogger will make it through. Because Hogger is definitely a threat here on Dragonshire. I did make a call on Twitter today. I said that we're going to see a Ragnaros this series. I have no basis for this. There was no patch. There were no changes. But that was the call I made, that we would see a Ragnaros today. We'll see if anyone from the teams wants to take me up on that or if they will let me wallow in my wrongness. We shall see. Stukov and Zeratul gonna be our opening bands here. Zeratul, definitely a sort of map pick here on Dragonshire that can do some interesting stuff. Regen removing that Stukov. I wonder if they're gonna remove the Brightwing as well, or if they wanna leave that up for them to possibly pick. You only understand Fs? Let's see, what would that be, like 45? 50? Something like that? Maybe more like 45. 
Falstad going to be the band here from Regen. And there goes the Junkrat from GG Till I Die. Is Lauber playing? No. They just use Lauber's picture. <laughs> Altanian going to lock in Dahaka first pick here. Dahaka, get that global roll in here on Dragonshire. GG till I die. Notably, Laubernless is going to go for that Brightwing Legacy, locking that in. And Fancy Pants going with the Tychus here. It's a lot of, uh, it's been, uh, it's been a lot of early pick Tychus as of late. Tychus can do some good work versus Dahaka. Dahaka relies on slow damage and extremely high regen to be able to work in those back lines. So I do like the Tychus in response to the Dahaka pick. Response to that, Anubarak going over to Aragonis and Albatox going with the Hanzo here. Hanzo, I've, you know, it's it's one of the big three on Dragonshire, right? You think of the bottom lane anchors. You think Junkrat, you think Chromie, and you think Hanzo. Zagara was starting to creep into the conversation a little bit before she got nerfed into the depths of hell again. But Hanzo is definitely one that can pop up here on Dragonshire. I wonder if it's going to be an extra stun follow-up with the Anubarak engage, or if there's going to be some sort of lockdown Dragon Strike shenanigans. Greymane will be removed by GG till I die. And there go the Vikings. Regen going to remove the global option. Somewhat global option of the Vikings. <laughs> yeah. The first time GG Till I Die played here on the channel, I believe Lauber was very confused as to why he was seeing himself on the screen there. <laughs> Vince going for the Diablo here on the side of GG Till I Die, and Jay going with the Rexar. We've seen a couple of Jay Rexars in the previous weeks. Played too much effectiveness. Both Rexar and Dahaka are notably slow at clearing top lane Bruiser Camp pushes. So we'll have to see if either or both teams are going to prioritize those uh, those top side Bruisers to try to push into those heroes. Splash going to bring the Lucio and Flyest Raven on the Maltheal to round this out. So a double Bruiser setup for regen here. We'll see whether they're going to start to hawk a top, start Malthiel top, or how they're going to rotate around this map. Hanzo might be solo bot. There's a lot of ways that Regen can set up this comp. Very, very interesting here. Malthiel going to be good against the Diablo. Maka going to lock in Sylvanas to round out this composition here for GG Till I Die. Sylvanas Tychus, pretty strong siege composition here. Brightwing going to be able to shut down a couple engages, especially that of Malthiel. So GG till I die. I, I like their setup. I like the way that they're uh, they're going to be engaging in these fights here, but Regen has a very flexible setup here. Excited to see how they play this comp. All right. Let me readjust myself in my chair. All right. We're updated. We're ready to go. Loading in to game number one. Let's run a prediction, why not? Prediction start. Regen, GG. Let's run a prediction, why not? Loading on in here. It's game number one. Looking at the comps once again. I feel like the macro advantage could be on the side of regen here. But Rexar, very sturdy up in that top lane, and Brightwing able to port around the map could cause some trouble. We'll have to see how it goes for him. Alrighty, game number one underway here. On the left in the blue, we have Regen. Albatox is on the Hanzo. Aragonis playing Anubarak. Flyest Raven is on Malthiel. Splash playing the Lucio. And Altanian on the Dahaka. On the right and the red, GG till I die. Paused the game. Vince did. We'll introduce them in a second. 
Dripping with swag. How you doing, goon? I gotta break out the full kit every once in a while. Sometimes I do just the hat. Sometimes I do just the shirt. Sometimes I do them both together to show that I mean business. And Storm Division is the place to mean business. All right, Giga Lag has been called. Hopefully we'll get that sorted out here in just a moment. Cat exploded. I don't know about that one. I feel like they might be fibbing a little on that one. But hopefully it gets sorted out here in just a moment. I think this has happened before and it was sorted out pretty, pretty fast. Pretty, pretty fast. So should be getting back into game number one here in a moment. I'm interested to see whether um, the top lane is going to be the focus for this Sylvanas comp right off the bat. Sometimes we see that, you know, sometimes it's usually with like an Anubarak Sylvanas. They'll just flood the top lane and try to bl blitz down the wall immediately and then have someone, you know, put your Tychus, put your Brightwing down in the bottom lane to, uh, to try to anti-siege on the other side. See if Diablo can do the same sort of thing, or if GG Till I Die is even interested in running that sort of comp. No Ascot already maxed out. If Occult Wiz puts an Ascot, NGS logoed Ascot in the store, how can I say no? At the very least, I can tie it to the mic stand here and just have it hanging down. Some little, you know, this is product placement. This is prime product placement right here. Anyone wants to feature their logo, send me a couple bucks. Right there. Right there. That's where it'll be. Got the lighting coming down. It's perfect. Uh-oh, we've got an internet DC at the same time. Yikers Island. This could take a little longer than we thought. Hopefully not too much. Hopefully not too much. Well, let me hang out here. Uh, how was your day, chat? <laughs> How's your evening going? We're here on a Wednesday, halfway through the week. Or if you're a hardcore gamer, time is just a figment. And you just game seven days a week. I don't know. I don't know your life. I know that I go to and sit in a cubicle five days a week. And this is exactly halfway through the week right now. Because Thursday and Friday take just a little bit longer than the first three days of the week. Because of the anticipation of getting out of that cube. It's important. It's important to look forward to things and understand what hump day jokes are about. For the longest time, like into my early 20s, um, I, I thought hump day jokes were just straight sex jokes. I thought I was so confused. I'm like, is this just a societal agreement that adults hump on Wednesdays? Why is everyone so okay with this? And then I finally saw some pictures of the joke. Or if, like, there's a camel, there's a hump on it. And I was like, oh. And that was, a, that was a defining day for me. That validated my, you know, introvert nature of figuring stuff out before asking. Because that, you know, it took me a long time to learn that one. It took me a very long time. I'm riffing as hard as I can here. There's no word yet on Mako returning. Logging back in. Yes. Yes. All right. So we're not full DC mode. We're not, you know, series default mode. We're coming back soon. This is going to be a weird cut. <laughs> this is going to be a weird cut in the VOD, but we're going to cut it. Looks like we've got the R's. Starting to come out here, waiting for the blue R to come in, and then we'll be able to introduce GG Till I Die, finally. Now that you all know a little bit more about me, this is this is where you get to know your caster, is in an unexpected delay, because I'm here alone and I've just got to talk about stuff for an undefined amount of time. That's just how it is. Oh dear. All right, we got one team ready. Do we have a second team ready? I'm waiting to press the button. I'm very, I'm very ready. All right, we got a blue ready. Let's jump in once I see a three, two, one. Back 
We're back. On the right in the red, we have GG Till I Die. Maka is on the Sylvanas. Jay playing the Rexar. Legacy is on Brightwing. Vince playing the Diablo. And Fancy Pants is on the Tychus. Here we go. Here we go. Game number one is underway. Hanzo going with the Scatter Arrow quest on level one. Dahaka is going with the Tissue Regeneration. Going to be bumping up that health total as the game goes on. We see Regen is already split into lanes here. Dahaka top lane, Malfiel bottom lane. Looking to prevent any cheese. And their, you know, their early team fight is not that great, so might as well not get too, uh, get too chummy there in the mid against a Diablo Brightwing composition. Ooh, Fly is been able to barely get behind the wall there. What other wisdom can Crush share from the cube life? Uh, don't be picky about your coffee. Don't be picky about your coffee. Just take what they give you. You'll be a lot happier that way. Dahaka, still working in the top lane here versus Rexar. That battle will go on and on. And here we see Fly Straven is right on top of this top left bruiser, wanting to put the pressure on Rexar immediately here. That's sort of what I thought was going to happen. Right now, GG Till I Die is going for the bottom right siege camp as is tradition. And Regen is just soaking out the lane. They're not worried about their own camp just yet. We'll see if GG Till I Die sniffs this out and goes for an invade here. Malthiel finishing that top left bruiser. GG Till I Die just controlling the mid, controlling the rotations here. It looks like we're going to be moving up to the top lane. Altanian trying to clear out here. Vince looking for a pin. Altanian, oh, almost went a step too far. The overpower is in. We're going to see the dig come on through. Nice job, knockback. And it's still going to be enough. Fancy Pants with a great grenade there. Getting Dahaka into position for the Misha charge to land. And that's first kill of the game going over to GG Till I Die. Meanwhile, bottom lane is starting to push here. Albatox trying to clear out the lane. Fly Straven in a little bit of trouble, actually. As Tychus and Diablo, still very threatening duo on those rotations. Aragonus going to be stunned next. Polymorph comes on out. Fancy Pants with another nice knockback as Anubrak is actually going to re-engage here. Looking for the Tychus. Splash going in as well. Just forcing Fancy Pants back, just putting a little bit of poke damage on there. Moving way across the map for a little bit of poke damage, you know how it is. Meanwhile, in the top lane, though, Maka and Jay are just pushing into Dahaka here, taking out the entire wall. There goes the well as well. Black arrows come on out. Wow, they got a lot done there. Very nicely done by GG Till I Die, controlling those rotations and exploiting the uh, difficult defense that Dahaka has to undergo there. GG Till I Die. Have the pin on the bottom side. Polymorph coming out onto Albatox, but Hanzo has the natural agility to get over that wall. Rexar looking for a possible cap here. Malfiel is zoning. Vin's going to get the pin once again onto Aragonus, but the Burrow Charge... Oh, it doesn't actually stun. Going to have to use the Impale. Is the overkill enough for the kill? Yes, the grenade lands and Anubarak is down. Unfortunate that Aragonus didn't get the initial stun there onto Tychus. Fancy Pants was able to start that damage train right away. Fly Raven in some trouble here as Tychus is coming up. Will there be another grenade overkill? Ooh! Both of them blinked on that attempted kill. But Jay has the channel. And first dragon at 3 minutes 50 seconds is going to go over to GG till I die. Meanwhile, Maka has been continuing to push here in the top lane, using that possession to make things all that much harder for Altanium. Aragonus moves in, can't quite get the double stun as Maka activated the unstoppable. Legacy coming up to the top lane as well. They want to see if they can finish off this top fort. Malthiel was actually pushed away by the dragon. Fancy Pants on the chase to activate the overkill. Oh, Fancy Pants actually moved away for a moment, thinking that the kill was secure. Finn's going to mount up and leave, and that's going to be Malthiel going down. Sylvanas actually died there in the top lane. As Anubarak peeled back to get that kill, but the top fort is gone. Dragon Knight, seven seconds left on it. Going to get the well in the mid after taking about half of the fort health. 
uh, Nubarak dying up in the top lane. We've got the, a lot of action and a lot of lanes here in the early going. Here on Dragonshire. Splash trying their best to soak down here in the bottom lane. That's a tough life for Lucio. As the siege camps are now up and available. It's being started by both teams. But GG Till I Die just going to bully their way in for the invade here. And they will also get their level 10s. We've got the Commandeer Odin, Blink Heal, Unleash the Boars, Lightning Breath, and Wailing Arrow here for GG Till I Die as they grab both of the bottom lane siege camps. Black Arrow's going to be popped as this wall is going to be taking a ton of extra damage. Nubrak looking for a possible burrow over the wall here, but with no wall to retreat behind, that is not advisable. This fort in some big trouble as level 10s are about to be here for regen, and there they are. We'll see if they want to take an engagement. Malfi on the edge. There's the dragon arrow going to land. Fly Straven moving on the edge. There is the unstoppable popped by Fancy Pants trying to dash on out of there. Fly Straven with the tormented souls trying to heal back up. Moves into the back. It's healed back to half, but the lightning breath is enough. Tyke is going to be traded out for Malfiel in a one-for-one one, as Diablo is thrown into the cocoon. Is the polymorph enough to get a new Barak? No, the burrow charge for the escape. Keeping this a 4v4. Vince isn't done yet. Is going to get stunned on the way in. Dehaka landing a drag as well, but Vince very, very healthy with the support of Legacy. Ooh, nice scatter arrow there, actually. Hanzo nearly done with that level one. But just a one-for-one one in that trade. I thought that was going to be a more, uh, more heavy commit. Both sides there. Very nicely done. Ults you saw on the side of regen there were the Dragon's Arrow, Isolation, Cocoon, Tormented Souls, and High Five. As we could have ourselves another quick dragon here. GG Till I Die going to capture both points. So regen going to have to keep an eye on that capture point. Flystraven able to finish up the Bruiser Camp in the top lane. Fancy Pants going for the channel here. Burrow Charge going to have to be put in there. It's Fly Straven. Uh-oh. Malthio could be in some trouble. They've both sort of committed to the engage. Dragon Arrow is going to come through as well as the Tormented Souls, but there's so much extra damage. Malthio is going to go down here. Maka somehow surviving long enough for the phase shift to come on through. GG Till I Die has the player advantage here. Fancy Pants trying to pick up the channel. On low health. Hanzo can't quite get the Sonic Interrupt. Diablo caught under tower range, but still with enough health and armor to get away. Another dragon's going to go over to GG till I die. Mid fort going to go down here. They're going to get a quick breath onto the bottom fort. That's going to be all tier ones taken out by GG till I die. Rexar going to be working on clearing out that top bruiser camp that was taken during that bruja. Just trying to get the wave clear. Let this minion wave catch up to the wall so the dragon can get a little bit easier damage coming on out. Oh, Aragonus going straight in there, finding the double stun onto Vince. Regen looking for opportunities here, but it's very, very difficult to step up. Malfiel stuck in the corner is going to get flipped over, but the unstoppable is going to be enough. Fancy Pants in a tough position there. There's the lightning breath coming on out. Really unfortunate there for Tychus, caught in deep right as the Dragon Knight expired. Now Flyest Raven is trying to chase down Vince here. Not going to go for it all. Sylvanas is going to run into the wall there to try to allow the rest of the team to escape, but that is a double kill here for Regen. Let's see what they can do with their time advantage. Vince coming on out there. Nice unstoppable, granted once again by the high five. Really, really coming in handy to deny these Diablo engages. Vince looking for a flip over the wall. Actually, with a shadow, shallow shadow charge, Flyest Raven is put low. Anubarak is low as well. Oh, nice reposition there from Malfiel. Able to warp through Misha with the charge. Another unstoppable applied by the high five. The high fives just keep on coming, but there's so much CC from GG till I die. Can Flyest Raven get the boost out? No, Malfiel is going to fall. I mean, just cleanse after cleanse after cleanse, but between two Diablo stuns, a polymorph from Legacy. The knockback and the stun from Rexar. 
There's just so much. There's so much for poor Lucio to do. Prepare yourself. How you doing, J Hud? Today is Wednesday, my fellow. <laughs> Full League was yesterday. But you are correct about that. Bottom bruiser camp going to be claimed here by GG till I die, as well as the left, right side siege. Regen trying to control the vision here. Maka, ooh, doesn't step too far. That could have been a nice pick. Maka keeping their distance. Nice scout. Bottom lane pressure is going to be building up here, though. We've got the Bruiser Camp and the Siege Camp pushing on to an already damaged wall. Big stun there from Aragonis. Odin is going to be popped to start the Siege. Maka popping the Black Arrows. Not getting a ton of value, but this camp pressure is still going to be large. Flystraven trying to step up and clear, taking damage down to about half. Look at that blow up! Malthiel taken away there. Maka with the last hit. And now this keep definitely going to be going down here. They have the level 16 advantage as well. Are they going to push further? No, it looks like they're going to back off here. Dahaka able to soak 16 there in the top lane. But GG Till I Die is on the rotation and Ultanian is going to start to back out. Means we've got... Oh my... I disagree with that pin. Aragonis gets flipped around there. The Going the wrong way. Actually got flipped and then the Q to action forced Aragonis to go right instead of left. And Anubrak is going to go down. Ultanian trying to find the kill onto Legacy. Will not get it. Maka low but survives. It's a double kill here for GG Till I Die. They've got the dragon and they've got an open lane down here on the bottom side. Oh, nice two for one on that cleanse. This Fly Straven is going to go for it all here, but it's not going to be enough. Malthiel falls as the third kill. Albatox low as well. Lucio trying to heal up. Black Arrows is going to save Maka from the keep aggro, but this looks like it's going to be game. GG Till I Die stepping up to the core here. Oh, the melting point! But Splash has the pump it up. No extra kill, but plus one on the core. GG till I die picks up game number one. Oh, GG. Alrighty. Very nicely done. Game number one. Vince, an absolute threat on Diablo that game. Just the the shadow charge angles, the overpower timings were really, really impactful. Really unfortunate sort of cued command there from Anubrak at the end leading to the final push. But GG till I die, successful. 11 kills to four. See Albatox, top hero damage for regen, nearly 53,000 there. Fancy pants for GG till I die, a little over 42,000 hero damage to close out that game. Let's update the scoreboard here. There we go. Close out the prediction. And it looks like we've got a game number two. Getting ready to go. We're going to be going to Towers of Doom. Let's lock it in. Towers of Doom, game number two. Who chose the map? It's GG till I die. All right. It's so Regen opting for first pick after that one. Took the opportunity to drop my coaster on the ground. That's how you know it's time to clean your coasters, by the way. If you pick up your water and your coaster follows it for two inches and then falls on the desks, just give your coaster a quick clean. Fix it right up. <laughs> All right, lobby is filling up here as we get ready for game number two. It is going to be Towers of Doom for our second game of the day. Yeah, it looked... Uh, it seemed like 
I'm not sure if there was a power spike left for regen there. I mean, the the early game power was definitely on the side of GG till I die. Um, between the Dahaka and the Malfiel, you know, getting tens definitely helped in regen, starting to fight back there. But it seemed like they were just they didn't have the opportunity to get that even ground of level twenty talents. They didn't have enough time on that even level 16 tier to try to turn around those fights and to let Hanzo start to shred with that 16 uh, power spike. And GG Till I Die just kind of ran away with it. All right, let's get into draft number two. Put a little salt on that coaster. Maybe if it was one of those rimmed coasters where the salt would stay in it. But then it would just be crunchy feeling. I don't know about that one. I'll put that one in the maybe file. Stitch is going to be our opening ban here from regen. Stitches is kind of the tank to worry about lately. It's not super effective on all maps, but it's effective on enough maps where you've got to keep it open as an early ban. Zeratul once again, taken away here by GG Till I Die. Towers is another map where Zeratul can do some work, but I feel like this is more of a Flyest Raven target ban than it is a map, excuse me, map consideration ban at this point. Dragonshire, I was like, okay, that, that, that could be a non, you know, a non-targeted map ban. Towers of Doom, eh, I think they're just taking that away from Raven. <laughs> Regen once again going to remove the Vikings here, as they are very, very powerful here on Towers of Doom. GG Till I Die, will they remove the Junkrat? Of course. Of course they'll remove the Junkrat. No Junkrats allowed in Storm Division. That's in the contract, by the way. <laughs> the Wine and Cheese show. I, I'll tell you about the coaster part of Wine and Cheese. Everything else is up to someone else who knows better. <laughs> Splash going with the first pick, Stukov, here. Stukov was banned instead of Stitches in game number one, so Regen not wanting to give up that one. See if GG Till I Die is... I wouldn't be surprised to see Legacy just go back to the bright wing here. They're going to go with Falstad and Nubarak, though. Okay. So they're they're not worried about the bright wing getting banned. They're instead going to go with the other global pick and sniping away that Anubarak. I do like that little draft maneuver there from GG Till I Die. Globals, of course, when used with experience in comms, very, very powerful. Ooh, it's a Nazebo. Nazebo going to be picked up by Albatox and Aragonus going for the Varian. Exciting stuff. We get a Varian and a Nazebo. Regen. You're doing it for me, man. This is what I want to see. This is what I want to see. GG Till I Die. They're looking at the Nazebo. They're looking at the Stukov. It's a pretty crazy combination. They're going to remove the Grey Mane once again here. You know who goes great with Nazebo on every map but this one? Ragnaros. <laughs> Nazebo wants to get to level 20. What hero gets you to level 20 better than a Ragnaros with Lava Wave? I ask you that. But it's Towers of Doom. You can't do it. <laughs> it's, it's the only map where you can't do that. Ah. Ah. Unbelievable. That's okay. Maybe GG Till I Die will pick up Rag. <laughs> Don't go Rag mid Falstad top. That's going to work. Especially versus a variant Stukov comp. I want this. Get, just let me let me be right about Ragnaros, okay? Legacy gonna go for the Anduin as Brightwing was banned away. And Jay going for the Hogger on that double soak rotation. What we assume is a double soak rotation could be something like a 1 1 3 with the Falstad. I'll have to see how they set it up. Regen looking to lock in the rest of their comp here. Tychus open. That could be part of the trifecta. They're going to go with the Sylvanas and Leoric. Sylvanas, Leoric to round it out here for Regen. So Leoric versus the Hogger. Again, I find the player. There we go. 
<laughs> I was trying to find assign Leoric to the right player. GG till I die. Looking for the last pick here. They've got the Falstad for damage. What are they going to lock in for this last spot? The Lunara. Going to be the choice here for Maka. Spicy pick into a Varian. I mean, there's not a ton of blow up between Sylvanas and Nazebo. But I think if you're locked down in a, you know, in a taunt, silent zombie wall, that could still be trouble. <laughs> we'll see how Maka does it. Let's get ready for game number two. Tired hero wanted the chromie. I love chrome. I'll take chromie any, any chance I get. Give me some chromie. Anyone change heroes? No. All right, good. Good, good, good. Loading on into game number two once again. Let's do a prediction. Start the prediction. Who will win game number two? Liking the draft from regen a little better. It is a little more standard. They've got some more early game damage. They do have to wait till four to have a tank, but then, you know, that's just the Varian life. Varian Stukov, I like the combination. The Orc to try to carry them into the late game and, uh, and bully the Hogger a little bit. Prepare Good work. Let's find out. Heroes. Let's go. Game number two on the left in the blue. We have Regen. Albatox is on the Nazebo. Altanian playing Leoric. Flyest Raven is on the Sylvanas. Splash playing the Stukov. And Aragonis on the Varian. The on the right in the red, we have Thanks. GG Till I Die. Legacy playing the Anduin. Vince is on Anubarak. Jay playing the Hogger. Fancy Pants Four, on Falstad. Three, two, and Maka is playing one. Lunara. Fight. Here we go. Game number two. Zebo locking in that spider build. Widowmakers now has a slow attached to it. Which is kind of what is making Zebo crazy right now. Ain't that cool. Falstad going with the Q-Quest Hammerang build on level 1. Going to be stacking up that negative armor. Zoltanian taking a big hit there in the early going. But it's Leoric. That's okay. Leoric's allowed to take some damage. Predictions up and running. Make sure you go and bet your points. Remember, gambling is good for you. Especially when it's with fake internet money. Looks like Falstad going to be going up to the top lane for now, leaving Hogger in the mid. So looking like a little bit of a 1-1-3 setup for GG Till I Die. Is Legacy going for the big flank onto Flyest Raven? Going to take Sylvanas down to half here. Meanwhile, we've got a sil Silence coming out from Splash. Aragonis could be in trouble. Fairy in the lane minion trying to get away here. Doesn't have the health just yet. Has the parry to come out. Charge onto Vince and Anubarak is actually going to be the first to fall. Regen picking up first blood. GG till I fly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's the way. Sapper camp's up and available. We're going to see Hogger spinning and getting that locked down for GG till I die. Regen doing the same thing here on the left, grabbing those sappers. If we take a look at the experience. Very even. Different kind of lane setups, but the soak is being captured by both sides. Nice double impale there from Vince, but the zombie wall is going to stop Anubarak from advancing. Aragonis is almost a real boy now. Level 4 on the horizon as we get the charge slow onto Anubarak. Sappers are going to meet on the left side of this lane, and now the shield is going to come out here. The taunt up and available. Taunt comes out onto Anubarak. Silent zone follow-up is good. Albatox getting a couple of hits here. The spiders do come out, but the shielding available from Anubarak is going to deny a lot of that damage. Ooh, Flyest Raven. Barely avoiding the chastise there as Maka was pecking away with those poison spears. Silence into the zombie wall, but there's Legacy with the save and Flyest Raven. Barely able to survive with 40 health there. Meanwhile, Hogger was actually taking the top sapper through all of that for GG Till I Die. Leoric trying to double soak here versus Falstad and Hogger. That's going to be very, very difficult to do as the top lane gate is going to go down. Flyest Raven just trying to catch some of the soak here in the mid. 
for regen. Maka actually going for the top left side. Altanian is going to be met by two heroes here. The Auric could be in trouble. Flyest Raven coming in to try to make it a 2v2. Hogger has the top right channel already taken care of. Bottom side is going to go over to regen. So it looks like top two going to go to GG till I die unless Altanian and Flyest Raven can keep making plays here. Flyest Raven takes some damage trying to get behind the wall. One interrupt. I don't think they can interrupt Maka though. Lunara gets the channel and GG Till I Die gets the 2 1 on the first objective. Are we going to see a taunt here? Maybe. I think taunt must have been on cooldown because I think that's a dead J. The taunt comes out. Maka. Oh my goodness. And Vince both incredibly low, but both of them survive. Titanium going to attach the drain, but will be disconnected by the barrel roll from Falstaff. 2v1 here on the top side. Altanian going to get the spooky walk and move on back. That means that the uh, the bottom lane pressure is going to come out here from regen. Taunt onto Anubarak is in. There is the zombie wall silence. Anubarak with nowhere to go and that is the bug going down once again. I was kind of clowning on the kill pressure of uh, of Nazebo Sylvanas but with the, you know, with the silence that lasts so long due to the zombie wall, they're getting it done. I like the comp. Hogger is going to fall as well. Is able to use the uh, the hog wild to just go straight through the wall, but does take damage from those zombies on the way. Another kill. That's three stacked up here for Regent. So they're going to grab this sapper camp steel here on the right-hand side as we have a solo bottom lane altar coming up next. Aragonus threatening that front line here. So the sappers are going to be met by GG till I die. Albatox ready to follow up. Taunt is in. Oh, but a nice stun there is going to deny the zombie wall from coming on out. Fancy Pants coming in with the flank. Vince is going to engage. Zombie Wall is going to cut off Fancy Pants for the meantime, but Jay on the edge is putting a lot of damage here on Devarian. Aragon is going to try to reposition, but will go down. That means GG Till I Die going to pick up another altar, another four shots here in the early going. Albatox able to get out of range of that Chastise and live that engage by GG Till I Die. Sapper's going to be cleared away, and the bottom lane push is going to continue as Varian has just made their way out of the base. Looks like Hogger trying to double soak versus Leoric there in the mid and top. Both teams are going to have their level 10s roughly at the same time here. Tens come on through for regen just a moment earlier. We've got the Haunting Spirit, Juggernaut, Entomb, Massive Shove, and Sylvanas still thinking about it. Elias Draven is going to go with the Wailing Arrow there. Over on the side of GG Till I Die, we've got the Gust, we've got the Cocoon. Thornwood Vine is going to be the choice here for Lunara. Portapult and Light Bomb is Legacy going to get the quick save from that engage. So Maka going with the poke option. If the, if the kill threat is to be caught in a forever silence, I can see how Leaping Strike may not be the call. Instead, just going for consistent poke damage here. Nice interrupt on the charge there. Aragonis had the sound cue go off, but was impaled along the way. Nubarak looking for a possible engage as we have an even further down to the bottom lane altar. Altanian going down in the top lane. Must have been a wave collapse or something. Jay picking up the solo kill there. Very nicely done. Varian discovered in that top bush. The altar is spawning here. Falstad is on the way. It's going to be a 4v4 for now. Hogger coming on through as well. Looking for a possible flank here. Aragon is going to be discovered by Legacy. Chastise is going to be used. And Jay's in the back line. Anubarak not going to connect with the light bomb. But Sylvanas is caught on the backside anyway. There's Cocoon onto Nazebo. Going to cut out a lot of that sustained damage. Altanian trying for the Entomb but will not connect. Splash and Aragon is able to get behind the wall. Altanian taking some big hits there. Able to get away with the spooky walk. So I struggle to remember the name of the ability. 
Once again, we've got an objective going over to GG till I die. Another four shots going in. Wraithwalk is the name of the ability. Wraithwalk. <laughs> We'll see if GG Till I Die is actually going to allow Regen to hit those combos anymore. They were coming through very effectively in the early going, but GG Till I Die might be wise to the scheme now. See if they can deny future engages of the infinity buried alive combination, as chat did put it. Not quite infinity, but long enough for the Todd comes out on a J Silent Zone as well. Anduin pull is going to be activated, and Hogger is spinning right through the back. There's the light bomb going to land onto Stukov. Splash taking a lot of hits. The massive shove not going to connect. Fancy Pants going to push Dew back in. Sylvanas is down. There goes Stukov as well. Varian going to fall. Albatox with nowhere to go. The Zebo is next. Quad kill for GG till I die. And they're going to start to push the bottom lane with these sappers. Vince getting that tower down. Going to allow these... Pumpkins to march their way onto the structure. That's going to be map control going over to GG till I die. Regen is spawning now. Tanian taking some hits there from Hogger in the mid. Another wall is down. Oh wow. A lot of damage there onto Altanian. Nice poke there with a the Thornwood Vine. The Orc is going to live. Got a double altar phase. Down here in the bottom lane. Ooh, Hogger. <laughs> Watch those angles, buddy. I thought he might have clipped right into the base. Hogger with the knockback silence. Always oh, able to walk through the wall, though. Able to hit Varian away and continue to walk. Jay does survive. Anduin channeling the bottom altar. We'll pick that up for GG till I die. Varian with a taunt on the backside. Once again, looking for Hogger. Hogger not able to get out that time as the silence was in. Hogger down here. Vince trying to turn it around. Double stun. There is the light bomb going to land and Lunar is next to fall. But there goes Sylvanas as well. Gust comes on out here from Fancy Pants to try to create some space. Vince is going to be taunted there by Aragonis. Able to slip away from the zombie wall combo. Right now, Regen with the 2-1 to one kill advantage. Albatox is channeling. Fancy Pants going to have the first interrupt. Splash. Oh, Splash. Gotta be careful there. Finds the slow onto a new brack. Zebo has the objective channel. It's only gonna be three shots, but it will deny five shots to GG till I die. Vince, oh, able to get behind the wall there and deny the taunt. There is a level 16 advantage. As Hogger making their way back onto the map, Lunara making their way back onto the map. Regen going to have to move back here and try to work on their bottom tower. Altanian taking some hits here as GG Till I Die is going for the invade. Bottom tower does go back over to Regen. Will they try to fight this? The camp is not done yet. Hogger is not hitting that last minion. All right. They're going to get the steal. The sappers will be cleaned up there. Falstad continuing to soak away here, going back to the top lane. Leoric trying to soak as safely as possible. Here for regen, look for that level 16. That's GG till I die with another set of sappers. Oh, Vince could be in trouble here. Aragon is thinking about it. But not going to commit. Jay on the backside here. Falstad going to fly in. Light bomb going to land onto Varian. Root comes out as well. Aragon is stuck on that wall forever. Flyest Draven is going to be pushed back along with Splash, but has the warp to get away. There's the big ult coming out from Nazebo. Legacy pulling Fancy Pants back into the fight. Stukov going to be the next to go down. Sylvanas falling as well. Albatox trying to get away. That's Nazebo falling. It's another quad kill for GG till I die. Right at the beginning of this triple altar phase. A triple cap and a boss is game here. The Aura can have to try to get this channel to save the game right now. Hogger is not on the way to interrupt. So that will not be it here. GG Till I Die going to grab the bottom side, going to grab the right side. I thought they were going to streak right across and try to stop Leoric, but Leoric saves the game for the meantime. GG Till I Die going to start up this boss. 
Falstad on the edge here. They're not going about it very quickly. Fancy Pants is going to come on in. Altanian is here. There's the Light Bomb going to land onto Leoric, soaking that ult. Regen is going to bully their way onto the point here. Jay going to move into the back. They're going to try to wipe them right here, right now. Flyest Raven is going to warp on through. The Silent Zone he is cutting off GG till I die, but Sylvanas is still going to get hit. Fancy Pants gets away from the zombie wall as Altanian is healing up with that grasp. Leoric will not be denied here. Finally going down after dealing a ton of damage. Splash is going to be caught, and that's Stukov going down. Albatox and Aragon is both caught by the Impale. What a seize there from GG till I die. It's not going to be a quad. It's going to be an ace here for the red team. And it looks like we're going to be headed towards a six cap here. Leoric and Sylvanas will be back, but all six structures are going to be in the hands of GG till I die. Vince, oh Vince. Vince is going to dive into the kill range. Oh Vince. Shots are flying into the core now. Six health remaining. Flystraven going to engage here, but takes a lot of damage. Is pushed very strangely. I think that was the second haunting wave. Yeah, that was the Wind Runner that kind of got mini interrupted there by the gust. The GG till I die. Having a little fun here as the game appears to be ending. Sappers in the bottom lane are looking across the line. Shots are firing across the map. This is going to be it here. Jay with the no control is going to be caught, but that is going to be game number two going over to GG till I die. Well done. Another great performance there. GG till I die picking up the victory. Very nicely executed there on Towers of Doom. Albatox on the Nazebo. Still top damage, regardless of it being a 15-minute game. Nazebo bringing the noise there. 44,000 hero damage for regen. We're on the side of GG Till I Die was Lunara, Maka. Over 58,000 hero damage with their own poison poke. Very nicely done. Very, very well done. Bring up the talent screen as we update the scoreboard. Close out the prediction. Get ready for game number three. Alrighty. Taking a look here. If you're wondering what the Nazebos are building these days. Widowmakers into Blood Ritual, Spirit of Eric here, Ravenous Spirit, Ice Block, and Spider Colony. Looks like we've got ourselves a lobby. Let's go to game three. Where's it gonna be? Sky Temple will be the choice. Sky Temple. Who chose map? GG chose map. Okay. All right, no breaks needed today. We're going straight into game number three here. GG Till I Die going to be bringing us to Sky Temple to try to close out this series. Regen was looking pretty strong there in the early goings on Towers of Doom, but fell apart there. We'll see if they can persevere, push through here on Sky Temple. Loading up the lobby once again. Looks like we've got all of our players. Give them the caster ready. And we'll get going. Another insight for you casters out there. If you're poking around with your mouse, you can type caster R. Actually, you can type caster ready with just your left hand. The more you know. Depends on whether... I like to reach across for the Y. I don't know if you do. When I'm typing, it's just a quirk of mine. I like to reach across for the Y. I don't know why. 
but I've always done it. I just reach across one. You're only supposed to go to the T with your touch typing, but I like to reach across. Here we go, Sky Temple game number three. Once again, regen will be first to act. When you think of Sky Temple, the first thing I think of, of course, is Ragnaros. But more importantly, Abathur. Abathur is a possible threat here on Sky Temple. Is Regen going to remove that Brightwing? As globals are indeed super important here. On such a large map, on such a macro first map. GG till I die. Considering their opening ban is going to remove Anubarak from the equation. One hand and diving and reaching across. I'm trying to teach you things, Dice. I'm trying to show you the way to go lefty 100% of the time. <laughs> Another healer removed here by Regen as Stukov taken off the board. GG till I die. Will they let Junkrat through? I think Junkrat's still pretty important. Still pretty important. Not as important, but still pretty important. Maybe they're going to tempt Regen to take it. And they've got something ready on their own. We'll see. They're going to remove Sylvanas. Okay. Junkrat up and available here. We'll see if Regen wants to pick that up. They don't. They're going to leave it. Altanian going right back to the Dahaka. Going to favor the global here. With Brightwing already banned. That's going to be a good clip. Me trying to stall for time before game number one. That's some clippable material. GG till I die. Going a little old school here. Vince with the Tyrael and Fancy Pants going for the Greymane. Of course, able to dive onto points. But more importantly, for Sky Temple, very good at controlling bosses and controlling camp capture points. Arterial and Greymane. You know what they're also good at doing? Oh, don't do it. If they go Juice Pirates, I'm going to be an upset bear. Flyest Raven going with the Zeratul. Aragonus is going to lock in the Muradin here. So some very self-sufficient heroes chosen here on the side of Regen. GG till I die considering the next ban. They're looking at the Haka, Zeratul, Muradin. Very self-sturdy. They've already got the Anubarak band away. Zeratul is an answer to sanctification, so they don't have to worry about banning that out. Lucio going to be the choice removal here for GG till I die. Lucio fairly self-sufficient as well, especially for a Tyrael setup where you don't have that hard CC to go after a Lucio. I do like that ban. Regen looking at Tyrael Greymane. Oh, are you going to ban Morales? They're going to ban the Uther. Okay. I feel like this is just going to be Morales going on down. Could they be so foul as to go for Juice Pirates in Game 3? Because this is all I'm thinking about right now. I'm waiting. Show me you won't do it. Show me you still have honor. GG till I die. Hogger going to be the choice here for Jay. Going back to the Hogger well. Oh! Morales going to be picked up by Legacy. Regen. Staring a Tyrael Morales in the face. Have their last two picks. Ready and rearing to go. How do you stop it? You've got the Zera tool. Got the Dahaka for off soak. What's the plan? Falstad's up and available. There it is. Albatox going to lock the Falstad. Splash is going to go with the Malfurion here. Try to get some good crowd CC, a big pushback to possibly defend this. Waka last pick. Sylvanas already banned out. Can we just see a Rainer? 
Is it Artanus? What are you doing to me, Gigi, till I die? Tell me! Last pick coming on through for the red team. What are you going to take? Tracer. Tracer doesn't bring buildings down. What is this nonsense? What is this silliness? A little bit of a flex pick here from Maka. See if there's any switcheroos. Looks like everyone's happy with their choices. Am I happy with their choices? I don't know. I don't know. But that's not up to me. They're allowed to play the game that they want to play. That's okay. That's okay. We're getting ready for game number three here. Let's fire up the prediction again. Bum, 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 bum. There we go. Who will win game three? As we load in here to Sky Temple. I, I think Regen has the answers. But is there an answer to such tomfoolery as this? We'll find out. Let's see. Alrighty. Getting ready. Game number three on Sky Temple. On the left in the blue, we have Regen. Flyest Raven is on Zeratul. Albatox is on the Falstad. Splashplay and Malfurion. Aragonus on the Muradin. And Altanian play in Dahaka. On the right in the red, we have GG Till I Die. Vince is on the Tyrael. Maka playing the Tracer. Legacy on Morales. Fancy Pants playing the Greymane. And it is Jay on the Hog. Get your predictions in. Who's taking game number three here? As we load into Sky Temple right now, we have the crew, the Siege Trio, going after this bottom tower. Albatox is in the area. We'll see it. Fancy Pants going to jump in, but Aragon is here as well. Stunning Greymane in the tower range. Morales going to try to get the peel on out of there. We see the speed from Tyrael will be enough to do so. Good, uh, good sense there from Regen. Finding the insertion point and denying the engage. Tahaka trying to get a little bit of side soak at the same time here as Flyest Raven comes on down to the bottom lane. Maka down on the bottom side as well as Aragonus playing with the vision there. Will be discovered. But the dwarf toss over the wall will be enough to get away. We see Siege Camp's going to be started up by both teams here. Very important for both sides, the Pirates and the Defenders, to get their level 10s as quickly as possible. The Splash is actually being chased out on the bottom lane here. Albatox and Maka clearing out those Siege Camps best they can. Hogger and Dahaka currently double soaking. Not something you see an awful lot here on... Sky Temple is a solo double soaker between top and mid, but that is what's going on. Aragonus. Oh, just a split second too late there as Maka blinking away. Fancy Pants trying to lock into that bottom wall, getting most of that tower down before being scared on out of there. Siege Giants will meet as level fours are achieved by both sides. Augur on the top right is actually uh, grabbing that bruiser camp for GG till I die. Jay locking that in quickly. Terracone is going to step forward there, taking some hits from this wave, actually, as Murden taking uh, quite a bit of damage. But that's what Murden does. Murden just takes damage and then dips out for a second, comes back, and it's like it never happened. Fancy Pants going to grab the last few pieces of that tower. As the push will continue, these, uh, these Siege Giants are very, very healthy as they make their way towards the wall here. Aragon is stepping on up there, has the Dwarf Toss to get away. Vince on the chase. This could be... Could Tyrael get these attacks off? It's like the heal from Splash is enough to keep Muradin healthy as Tyrael can head on back to base for some mana. Whole bottom wall taken out, though. By that three-player push. Very nicely done. 
Temples are spawning here. First temples of the game. Top and mid. As it always is. Falstad can use that global presence there for regen to soak out the bottom lane. We'll see who can control this mid temple. Start things off. GG till I die, able to step up onto the point. Vince warping onto Zeratul there, getting a couple of hits. Just fancy pants looking to clear away on this point. Zeratul. Oh, actually is going to be caught here. Fly Straven. Oh, barely able to blink away. Hogger now in trouble is going to go down. Fly Straven. I don't know how you survived that one. But that is first blood going over to regen. Temples are being traded out here. GG Till I Die finishes off the mid temple. Aragon is still a, still a while to go here on the top side, but should have no trouble securing that with Splash and Ultanian in the area. Tyrael throwing the shield on those lane minions definitely delays the clear of Dahaka by quite a bit. But here on the bottom side, Fly Straven is actually going to get hit by that pulse bomb, and whoa, Zeratul taken out by a flying Grey Maid. Not what I expected in that engagement. Nice job picking up that kill there as Alpatox able has to get out of town. But with Malfurion here, that should halt the push, at least for the meantime. Tracer gonna dive in there, but Aragonus. Oh, the Stormbolt! Coin flip not connecting there. Maka able to get away. There's a nice pushback, and there goes Greymane once again. Murden is down. Tracer able to get away from those tower shots. Now GG Till I Die, picking up their own two kills, are looking to pick up this bottom tower. <laughs> Excuse me. Bottom tower, no chance at all here. As GG Till I Die are closing in on their level 10s. Fly Straven back on the battlefield here. Falstad is going to go down, though. The diving tracer is enough for another kill. And GG Till I Die, they've got their 10s. Looking for a camp steal here. Sanctification, go for the throat. Hortipult. What is that? Quantum spike here. Morales gonna hold that level 10. Stim drone! There is hope left in the world. Stim drone is the choice for legacy, as the boss is started up by GG till I die. They went for the stim drone. Aragon is keeping an eye on things, but without level 10s, there's not a lot regen can do here. Dahaka gonna dig in. They have their 10s now. Aragon is gonna jump onto the point. Albatox is here. There's the gust. Can anyone get on there? A Hortipult from Hogger is enough. Sleeping on the point, though. Jay is gonna go down, and regen has the steal. They got their 10s just in time. Getting the chase onto Fancy Pants. The reposition not gonna be enough. Two kills go over to the blue team. They've got the boss. Let's see if they can catch up on this siege. Went with the Stim Drone. I didn't see it coming. I thought this was 100% Juice Pirates. I thought there was no other way it was going to go. But here we are. We're in a Stim Drone game. Boss and objective going to deal lethal damage to this bottom structure here for regen. As it is the single temple spawn. Vince going to try to bully these last couple points off as Fancy Pants and crew are on the edge here. Aragonus is going to look to get on out. Altanian. Oh, Jay is going straight back in there, finding the stun after Albatox with the gust away. The dive is going to continue as Altanian denies the pulse bomb. Jay continuing the assault here. Aragonus has the dwarf toss. It's still a very dive-heavy comp from GG Till I Die. They've got the Tracer, they've got the Hogger, they've got the Tyrael. Greymane can dive on in there. So Regen still has to be careful about that. Retreating is going to be very difficult. They do grab the last couple shots here on the bottom temple while picking up their Siege. Imagine we're going to see Jay start up this camp as well. Regen doing the same thing here on the left. They're going to grab their bruiser camp to try to even out this pressure. 
boss still a good three minutes away here, so they won't have to worry about that for too long. Aragonus looking to control the area. Next objective, still a little bit away. So Aragonus is going to catch Jay on the rotation, but Vince has the body blocks. Just putting a little bit of damage in. Regen did pick up their level 13s early. But GG Till I Die has them now. Zeratul taking a little bit of damage in the mid there from Hogger. But Jay does get away there in the mid. Bruiser Camp still pretty healthy here for GG Till I Die as it pushes through the top lane. Vince putting that shield out. Oh, Voltanian taking some hits. But has the adaptation to get back to half. The drag gonna con not going to connect there. Voltanian has expended all regen options. Vince with the Holy Ground is going to stop the retreat. Another nice knockback from the Morales Grenade. Voltanian with the... On the many, many health bars is going to use that Essence Pop once again to go back to full health. But the push is going to continue here. Falstad and Hogger are in opposite lanes. Tracer actually going to get hit by the Storm Bolt. The follow-up route is good. Drag here from Altanian, but staying nice and healthy is Maka for now. Has one blink. Pulse Bomb going to connect. Going to get a little bit of extra shielding. And Maka survives. Stim Drone came on out there onto Fancy Pants. Going to put some pressure onto Muradin, but the push is going to con still continue. Altanian Pop at the Essence once again. To Hogger just has so many health bars. On this defense, Aragonis looking for the flank. Another stun going to land on a Tracer. And Maka had the blink charge to get away this time. Throw our temples up, by the way. Zeratul has the bottom temple rolling here. Shots going on to the mid tower. Is Aragonis going to be pushed back? Altanian taking some hits. Holy ground into the back. Dahaka is going to pop the essence to get healed right back up. Voltanian cannot be denied, what can I say? Zeratul looking to finish off the bottom tower here in just a moment. This Maka is harassing Bird in here, but a nice Stormbolt escape is in order. Vince going to head on back for some mana. See how many shots Fancy Pants can get here in the top lane to finish this last fort on the side of regen. Jay just checking things out, but Altanian had ulted, ulted, had burrowed on down, so Hogger will get out of town. Looks like Regen going for a camp steal over here on the right hand side, as Greymane is still finishing up that top side altar. Dive is going to go on to Jay. The sleep comes out. There's a gust into the corner. There's the sanctification though from Tyrael is going to keep Hogger nice and healthy. Boss is up and available here as Regen steals the right side siege. Gust is down right now, was just using that engagement. Level 16's in for both sides. Will we see a boss attempt with Holy Ground now? Vince is thinking about it. It's still a 5v5, even with Gust down. That's a pretty risky opportunity. Looks like they're both just going to keep an eye on it, though. 16 is in, which means Zeratul's going to be dealing that much extra damage. Maka is looking for the Pulse Bomb. Reveal. Couldn't quite find it there. Aragonus looking to cut off the rotation of Hogger here. Jay going to be dismounted, and there we go. Oh, a great unstoppable Hortipult is going to deny that Stormbolt. Very nicely done. Finn's looking for a possible engagement here. Maka moving forward. 17s are in for both teams. Fancy Pants. Giving a little how do you do to the boss there. But very even here. A sliver on that top structure here for GG Till I Die is the only thing that's really separating these teams. Aragon is going to be discovered. This Fancy Pants repositions there into lane. This is all about boss control right now. Both teams really need the boss to help them push this lane. In the meanwhile, Hogger is taking the Bruiser. Zeratul taking the Bruiser as well. Just mirrored macro from both these teams here as the top lane single temple is going to activate. Tanks are going to have to stay around this boss pit just to keep vision of it. Morales trying to keep an eye on the mid rotation. 
Jay and Fancy Pants clearing out the top bruiser camp. Gonna try to create some space that way, and the, the boss is gonna be started. Regen jumps on it. Hogger and Greymane are mounted and on the way. Albatox does have the gust. Vince is gonna be ready to holy ground onto the point here. Can Hogger get here in time to unstoppable onto the point? Boss is down. There is the VP. Gust comes out as well. There's the Hortipult. Unstoppable onto the point. Who is going to take it here? Fancy Pants has the... Oh my goodness, it's just barking all over the back line. It's Malfurion and Falstad down. Flystraven trying to cleave away, but it's not enough. Altanian down as well. Greymane is absolutely cleaning up here. Aragonis has the Avatar, but it's not enough. The Ace is in from GG till I die. A quad kill there from Fancy Pants, and this looks like it's going to be core. Fancy Pants is going to move onto the structure here, got trying to avoid some hits. I think this is a core rush. GG Till I Die is going to take out the mid structure and move straight into the core. Still 16 seconds on Malfurion and Falstad. And with this siege comp, there's no chance. Fancy Pants is locked in. That's Eager Wolf on 16. No way, no how. What a boss pit. GG till I die in exciting fashion is going to lock out this 3-0. GG. Very, very cool. Hogger able to get there in time. Fortunately, the VP and the Gust came out at the same moment. That's a couple of big control tools taken away. Hortipole was used early. Sank came out. That was denied by the Void Prison. Holy Ground was denied by the Void Prison. And it just came down to an all-out scrap and Fancy Pants cleaned up. Very well played. Taking a look at the scoreboard. Albatox on the Falstad. Top hero damage such as it is there for regen. 25,000 there. Very macro heavy game played on their end was uh, Fancy Pants on the Grey Main, six of the team's eight killing blows, over 51,000 damage dealt. Very nicely executed, not Juice Pirate's composition. Update the scoreboard, close out the prediction. And we'll end this year broadcast.